Okay, so two, I'm well aware that I'm three minutes over the hour. <laughs> so I've got- I'm fine, we'll, we'll carry on, that's fine. I've got a couple of final things. So the first one is for doses. So we kind of think of um, sort of doses of estrogen at the higher end at around 100 micrograms or so the licensed doses or and as you say, it depends very much depends on the individual with the licensed doses. If somebody is on, so perhaps a perhaps a woman who's in premature ovarian insufficiency, perhaps you know somebody who needs a higher dose of estrogen than the highest licensed dose. As a specialist, would you be looking at additional progesterone for somebody who still has their womb when you get over? And the reason I'm asking is because quite a lot of people are on particularly on gel it would seem they're on more than four pumps of gel but they'll regularly ask well should I be on more progesterone what's I recognize there might not be a standard answer but what's what's the thinking on that currently so in, in theory you would say the logic would be to match each other match, match them together so if you think about it you're taking a dose of progesterone to protect the endometrium from the dose of estrogen that you're giving. And certainly, and we talked earlier on about give the patient what they need from an estrogen point of view. Mm. But yes, if you are going to go and for that individual, they need a high dose of estrogen, I would increase their dose of progesterone. So it would make sense. Now, of course, when you're talking about the combined preparations, so for example, if you have someone on Everal Conti and they need more, you might say to the patient, take a patch and a half of Everal Conti. So you're and could you do that? Can you actually have a yeah. half a patch? You can, you you can, can have. Use so it's a, it's, it's a matrix. So unlike the old style patches, which had kind of a blob of gel in the middle, if you cut it in half, it will evaporate. It, yeah. These are matrix ones, so you can cut them. Now, of course, it's out of license. It's not, of course, if you, you know, the company would say this, but, but again, out of license, as long as there is a good, explanation and reason and medical explanation for it, it it would be reasonable practice so yes so you can up it but if you follow that you are upping the dose to match match it you know the the the, the estrogen the progesterone to the estrogen yeah. now of course you look at it and say it's within context so if someone is upping from estrogel two measures a day to three you could say that's still within physiological and it's fine to keep the utrogestin 200 milligrams for 12 days a month. Yep. But if you are giving a higher dose, I would definitely increase the progesterone to match it. Now your clinical safety net with that, if you're not giving enough progesterone would be that patients will start having irregular bleeding. But of course, you don't want to kind of wait until that happens. And I would say that if you are in that situation, yes, if you're gonna end up, for example, needing let's say an ever 100 patch, I would certainly say I would give you a higher dose of you to adjust that and then I would have given you had you been on a 25 or a 50. Okay so the, the patch the patch question brings up another really interesting question because something else that we see is where women are on maybe it's usually a Conti patch that's usually the one but they're then they're then adding a pump of gel to the patch again from what you've said it would seem sensible that there is, or it probably seems sensible to change the regime altogether. But, but if that is what they're doing, it would seem sensible that additional progesterone is added for endometrial, long-term endometrial protection. Would that be correct? Correct. I mean, I would always say, yes, think of it along that line that you're giving an amount of progesterone to protect against the amount of estrogen and you want to build them up in parallel within reason i like as you refer to i'm not a fan there's nothing theoretically against that com a combination of of let's say gel and patch but i would generally say i mean i would say it's easier to control you're knowing what you're doing by upping the amount and of course just one point on 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 that it's it's also it's this whole element of fine tuning because you do find often people saying i've tried this patch or this preparation didn't work and I moved on to the next one without trying to up the dose. Because as you know, I mean, if you're taking a patch or gel or spray or a tablet, it's the same estrogen. Yeah. It's not a question of this is good and this is bad. Of course, there are huge advantages with transdermal. Yeah. But beyond that, from a, from a product, from a, from a, you know, a hormone, it's exactly the same. It's just a question making sure that you're 
upping it and fine tuning it and titrating it to what the individual needs. Okay, so I promise this is the last two questions. Okay. <laughs> the first one is about progesterone. So um, lots of people seem to struggle with progesterone. Um, and so I'm talking really about the kind of the cohort of women that we, you know, kind of support or look after, if you like. Um, and many of them, and this is very much under specialist care. This is generally not under GP care. Many of them have been advised that they can use their utrogestan vaginally. So whether they're sequential or whether they're continuous, they can use it vaginally. Um, one of the questions that we get asked a lot is, and really this is a question for their specialist and we tell them to ask that, um, is, is it as effective orally and is it equally effective orally and vaginally? And secondly, is it more effective vaginally and does that mean they can reduce the dose? So there is the whole, there's a theory of saying you've got a, what's called the first pass vaginal uterine effect that you're right. absorbing it locally to where you need it so from that point of view you could say there may be an advantage the mucosa and absorption may have some similarities evidence-wise we haven't got much evidence in this context so it's common practice and if you look at it from a point of view of how people respond with the bleeding it seems to be very similar and certainly from a point of view of breakdown products and side effects it seems to be more effective yeah. so from that point of view you would say it's common practice and reasonable to say if you're on utrogestan for example 200 milligrams for 12 days a month and you're getting pms symptoms or you're getting bloating and your feeling is making you drowsy and most and really they're not settling that you switch to taking it vaginally now how would that fare against taking a vaginal pessary of 200? I have to say, I, I mean, while I would always put the choice to the patient, I would always also say that the vaginal pessary has been manufactured for vaginal absorption. The tablet has been manufactured for oral absorption. And theoretically speaking, you're more likely to follow what is expected, how it was manufactured. So if, if patients are open to it, if you're taking 200 vaginally, I would prefer that they would take a pessary than a capsule, but it is common practice to use a capsule. It'll be safe, it'll be fine to do it. You can say a minor the theoretical advantage is that you are following the, 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 the pathway that, this, that the product was manufactured on because they've done it now based on the vaginal absorption. Okay. So, so if that so, makes sense. Yeah, it does. So the pessary, that's that's used off license for HRT, isn't it? Because it's licensed for fertility treatment. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Now, yeah. of course, you enter into the question of saying to me, what do you do with the continuous combined ones in that scenario? Because the pessaries are 200. And again, cutting them in half will be messy and they've got a bit of gel in them. In that group, there is another type of progesterone pessary called Lutigest, 100 milligrams. Again, a fertility product that can be used. So let's say you're on a continuous combined preparation and you want to take a vaginal or progesterone vaginally, you can take the same capsule and put it vaginally. Or if you want to take a pessary, you can take Lutigest 100 milligrams and put it in vaginally. But either will be will be fine. And, and again, you've got that whole aspect is also looking at the bleeding because that will tell you if they're not getting sufficient intake of their progesterone. But you would be, whether it's oral or whether it's vaginal, you would be prescribing the same dose. You wouldn't be reducing it's the it. same dose. I wouldn't adjust the dose. So if someone is on a sequential, I would give 200 as my starting point. And as we've discussed, you may need to adjust it, uh, adjust it either because of the estrogen or because people have got bleeding. So patients who've got irregular bleeding, your, your next step would be to up their progesterone dose. Uh, but I would keep the same dose with oral 